welcome back to Lucy Jones. Um, we have a question from Ruby Gonzalez from Southern California News Group who wants to know if we know how many aftershocks have been recorded since the 12.20 p.m. quake today. Um, I believe it's only one. I'm, uh, so it's now three. it's three. Yeah, so oh. there have been three aftershocks recorded. Sorry, Gabriel, Gabriel do you want to take it? Uh, sure. Yeah, there have been three aftershocks. So two were a 2.1 and then the third one was a 1.7. So uh, pretty small. So probably not felt unless maybe you're right on top of it, but probably not. Um, there could be, you know, it's possible that there could be some felt ones uh, later on, but so far uh, they there's been very few and they've been pretty small. Thank you, Gabrielle. And uh, Lucy, I know you were away to look at some information and check on some data. Do you have any updates that you'd like to provide at this point? Well, I would. Uh, I did check and compare it with the earthquake that happened a couple of months ago on June 2nd. We had a 3.4 in this area. Um, it's This earthquake is almost exactly due north from the location or a little bit west and a little bit north from where that earthquake was uh, back in June, but it, very close, probably the same system. Um, and as Elizabeth said earlier, there were also two foreshocks to this event. So we are seeing an ongoing um, process of, of earthquakes happening on this fault in this fault system. Yeah, and then we have another question from Ron Lynn. I think we've touched on this a bit about, uh, we don't know whether it's on the Pointy Hills Fault or the Lower Elysian Fault. Um, what can we say in general about the overall risks of these fault systems to LA? I, I would begin by saying, I, you know, uh, it, it's, it requires a, you know, a little bit of obsessive geology to even differentiate between the two systems. They're both together in a, um, uh, you know, in a stack, oh, you know, one on top of the other there through going running through East LA. They are considered the set of, of faults capable of producing probably the most damage of any earthquake in, Calif in Southern California because of the location, because they run under uh, old structures and uh, very densely inhabited areas. Um, the models, there was a model that was done for a seven and a half on the Plenty Hills thrust. Um, that ended up uh, being um, five or 10 times more damaging than a San Andreas earthquake because of so many people directly on top of it. That said, we need to remember that earthquakes on this fault system happen much less frequently than on the San Andreas fault. Um, the estimate is something like a few thousand year recurrence interval between the big earthquakes uh, on the uh, Puente Hills slash Elysian Park system. Thank you, Lucy. Um, Lucy or Gabrielle, would either of you be able to provide another quick overview of today's quake uh, for folks that have joined since uh, our earlier iteration of this press conference? Um, I, I can pick it up. We, we did have a magnitude 4.4 earthquake uh, today at uh, 1220 this, this afternoon. Uh, it was located five kilometers or three miles south southeast of Highland Park, which puts it, uh, you know, just west of uh, southwest of South Pasadena, uh, in an area with uh, very uh, high density of people. It was felt by very many people across the region. Uh, so far, the uh, U.S. Geological Survey's Did You Feel It system that tells, you know, that where you can report your responses is reporting 20,000 entries that have been put in, um, though it looks like it hasn't been updated very, uh, so there might very well be, be more than that. It hasn't been updated really recently. Um, so it's a um, uh, the sort of earthquake that happens here in, in Southern California at, at various intervals, but the largest, probably the strongest shaking we felt in at least East L LA area, the eastern part of the Los Angeles Basin, in quite a few years. All right, thank you. Um, members of the media, if you have any other questions, please go ahead and post them in the q and uh, Looks like we're coming up on about 20 minutes for this second segment. Um, Lucy, Gabrielle, Elizabeth, how do you feel about keeping this open? Uh, I think we've had 
this open for about an hour in total now. Do you feel like we have any other questions we need to uh, answer or topics to discuss? Well, I do see a new question coming in from Ron Lynn that is the one that uh, uh, is dear and, uh, near and dear to my heart, uh, which is what's going on about earthquake retrofitting. And I think this is a really important point. We have types of buildings that we know are very dangerous and that will kill people. And that knowledge does not make the building disappear. So we have seen a variety of retrofitting ordinances around California, uh, probably more in Los Angeles County than any other area of, of the state. Um, the worst type of building is what's called a, a, a unreinforced masonry building. Uh, Los Angeles passed mandatory retrofit of that type of building back in 1980. So there were none unretrofitted left in the 1994 Northridge earthquake. And in fact, uh, and nobody died in a, in a URM in that earthquake, which was unique for the size in, in California at that point. The majority of California cities have mandatory retrofit. Of, I mean, the, well, the, about half of California cities have mandatory retrofit. Um, uh, the majority by far in Los Angeles County have mandatory retrofit ordinances. But since then, we've also discovered, you know, really been able to show that there are two other types of buildings that are particularly dangerous. One of them are called soft first story um, buildings, which are multi-story buildings where the first floor has some sort of big opening, like it's a, a parking, a carport area that leaves, uh, a, that forms a, a stress concentrator. So when the earthquake hits and shakes this, the stress gets concentrated in that weak floor, and then you get a collapse of the first floor. It's what killed people in the Northridge Meadows apartment structure uh, in Northridge earthquake and left 49,000 housing units uninhabitable after Northridge because of you know how common that type of structure is in the apartment buildings of Southern California. Los Angeles has completed, it's uh, almost completed its retrofit of those buildings. There are another half a dozen cities, including Pasadena, Beverly Hills, West Hollywood, that have uh, uh, have already uh, enacted their retrofit legislation. Um, Burbank and Long Beach are also working on it at this point. Um, Santa Monica has also completed their retrofit program, but that's only a half a dozen cities, and uh, the majority of the other cities in Southern California have not adopted any of these in, in the ones in, in Los Angeles County. And this is something that not only kills people, as we saw in 94, but it also leaves people homeless. And we have enough of a homeless problem already. Uh, I, I would strongly encourage anybody listening to this that has an influence on this to look at getting more of those sort of buildings retrofitted because we can't afford to lose that housing when a bigger earthquake comes through. Um, the most dangerous type of buildings are what are called non-ductal concrete buildings. Los Angeles is in the middle of a retrofitting program passed in 2015, but they have 25 years to complete the process. Um, uh, and Santa Monica has also, and I think Beverly Hills has passed uh, non-ductal concrete. I'm not sure about Beverly Hills, but it's uh, much more limited because that type of retrofitting is more expensive and therefore hasn't been undertaken. But, you know, this was a small earthquake. There will be earthquakes that damage these types of buildings in the future. And I hope this is a wake-up call to people who have an influence on making these decisions. I will add one further comment. All of our modern building codes, they aren't going to kill you, but that doesn't mean the building's going to be okay. We also have an issue that we build buildings to solely not collapse. And uh, that means we um, accept complete financial loss of buildings, uh, which is expected to be pretty widespread when we have our big earthquakes because nobody builds more than the minimum standard in general. And we've advocated for increasing the minimum standard, which would add about 1% to the cost of construction uh, and would save a lot of money in the long run. But so far that hasn't happened. All right, thank you, Lucy. I don't see any additional questions. So uh, unless anyone else has any objections, I think we can probably uh, go ahead and end this press conference. Uh, how are you feeling, Lucy, Gabrielle, Elizabeth? Okay, all right. Uh, thank you everyone who attended today. If you have any other questions, you can reach out to us by email, uh, but we are gonna go ahead and end this press conference. So thank you all for attending. Hi, I'm Monty Torres with Fox 26 News on YouTube. Thank you for checking out our YouTube channel where we have loads of great content for you to choose from. 
And while you're here, why not click on the subscribe button right here? That way you can stay in touch with all the latest breaking news, everything news related within the Central Valley. And thank you for watching.